Hello family, we bless the name of the Lord for his goodness. The Lord is our strong tower, our refuge, our fortress. He is our shield, our exceeding great reward. Today, I want to read Exodus chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. It says, So I will reach out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I shall do in the midst of it. And after that, he will let you go. And I will grant this people favor and respect in the sight of the Egyptians. Therefore, it shall be that when you go, you will not go empty handed. Today, the Lord wants me to share with you that his, that his favor gives wealth. The favor of the Lord gives wealth. This passage is the word that God had given to Moses as a way of giving him insight as to what he intended to happen before the people of Israel left Egypt. And um, the Lord had said to Moses that while he was sending him to say to Pharaoh to let his people Israel leave the land of their slavery, it will come about that when the time comes for them to leave, he, the Lord, will cause the people of Israel not to leave empty-handed. But it was intention that they would leave with prosperity. They would leave with great wealth. And so, even in Exodus chapter 12, verses 33 to 35, I'll read from 33 to 36 actually, it says, The Egyptians anxiously urged the people to leave, to send them out of the land quickly, for they said, We will all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading bowls being bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. Now the Israelites had acted in accordance with the word of Moses, and they had asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they gave them what they asked, and so they plundered the Egyptians of those things. So in this passage, we see the fulfillment of a word of revelation that God had given to Moses. And this scripture, I'm using this as a way to let us know that when God says to us that his favor gives wealth, he is a God who has a way of causing the impossible even to become possible. For the people of Israel had suffered under their slave masters in Egypt. Yet, because it pleased the Lord to bless them, the Bible says that they found favor. They found so much favor that the very same slave masters that had caused them to work under such terrible, horrendous circumstances, when they asked of them for their articles of gold and of silver, they did not hesitate at all. They gave it to them without even thinking, what if we don't get what we're giving these people back? But again, we know that they did that because the Lord God himself had caused the people of Israel to find favor. It pleased the Lord to use that means to bless the people of Israel for all their hard work and labor and all that they had suffered at the hands of the Egyptians. But when the Lord says to you and I that he will give us wealth, it is not just giving us money, it is not just filling our our bank accounts, but it is giving us every blessing that would make us live a glorious life, a life that is abundant, a life that is peaceful. And so wealth This morning, I just want us to remember that it is not just about finances. It is about having good health. It is about having peace. It is about having all those things that the Bible tells us gives us abundant life. And every good and perfect gift, we understand, comes to us from heaven above. I think of the people in biblical times that were mightily blessed of the Lord. Not just the people of Israel, even as they left Egypt. But I think of Abraham, how the Bible says that he was so blessed of the Lord 
Yes, he had many um, cattle, he had many servants, he had his own soldiers and so on. But he had a rich relationship with God Almighty. That is wealth. I think of Moses, um, Moses being used mightily of God, hearing from God, speaking to God, going to God and he would ask God for directions as to what step he was to take next in all that he encountered from the time God gave him the assignment to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. That is wealth. When you can approach the throne room of God, you can inquire of the Lord and the Lord communicates with you and the Lord speaks to you and reveals to you hidden mysteries and gives you counsel and shows you what is yet to come. It is wealth when the Lord God Almighty causes great and mighty miracles to be performed through you, even as he works in partnership with you. I think of David, how God took him from being a shepherd and causing him to become a great king, a great king whose heart was after God. That is wealth. There's so many people that God had rich relationships with, used mightily, even the disciples, I think of them. I think of how God used extraordinary, extraordinarily used them rather. Men who the Bible says were fishermen, yet because they had been with Jesus, the Bible says that they spoke on occasions and um, with such eloquence to the point where people were wondering, are these not just ordinary fishermen? Are these not people that we know, you know, sort of like in quotes, riffraffs. Suddenly they're speaking with all this wisdom, with all this intellect. That is the wealth of God. So today, as the Lord speaks to you and he speaks to me, that he gives us wealth as a result of his divine favor. He's saying to us that we are to be a people who live that abundant life. And great, the greater gift he's given us, the greatest wealth that we have or can ever have as believers is the gift of salvation that money cannot buy. You can put all the rich men of the world together and their wealth together. Their wealth cannot buy the free gift of salvation. Because it is a wealth that God gives, again, as a result of his divine favor. For none of us did anything to merit the grace of God. To merit the fact that he would send his only son to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins. But God Almighty freely give, gave you and I who have believed him his free gift of salvation. What a great wealth that will go with us even to eternity. For when we die, it doesn't matter what wealth we had here on earth. It doesn't matter what riches we had here on earth. When we face the Lord God Almighty one day, it is the gift of salvation that would even first and foremost give us access. Jesus would not be asking us what great wealth we acquired. He will not be asking us about the careers we had here on earth. He will not be asking us about how much, many buildings, cars, you name it, that we had. How many people in in society with great influence that we knew. It would be all about what we did with the blessings that he bestowed upon us. Because he has called us to be good stewards of the blessings he gives to us. And when we stand before him. Apart from the fact that he would be asking us what we did with the gifts and the talents he gave us, he will be looking to see that we were good and faithful stewards. So it is a great promise that we have in God when he says to you and I that he gives us wealth because of his favor. But he also it should make us remember that we are to be held accountable for every blessing of wealth that God gives us because it is not our own. We are only stewards and therefore we have to have a mindset that whatever we have, 
we lay it at the foot of the cross and we say to God that we use whatever you give us for your glory, for your name to be glorified in our lives. Because God has told us his words are true. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word to you and I today that he gives us wealth as a result of his divine favor will remain true as we do the things he's called us to do, walking in holiness, righteousness, seeking his face and walking in his precepts, having a good relationship with him, favor will automatically be poured out on us. But when he begins to bless us as a result of the favor, let us also remember that we are to use those things to glorify his name. Because ultimately, when we stand before this great and glorious God, we will give an account, just as the servants had to, when they stood before their master after he had given them the talents and they, he traveled and he came back and they had to give an account. We will all have to give an account for the wealth and for every blessing that the Lord God bestows upon us. So we thank God that he has it in his heart, in his mind to bless us because his thoughts towards us are thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts to prosper us, thoughts to give us peace, to give us a future and a hope because he loves us so dearly. Today, we declare our confession and our confession is the Lord blesses me with his favor because of my righteousness in Christ Jesus. I have favor with God and with man, so I receive promotion and wealth in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord cause his favor to be upon you, to go before you and to speak on your behalf in Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed.